Earlier, we've seen the Q data structure, which is a LIFO data structure, last in, first out, that lets us model things like people waiting in line or any situation where we want to handle objects in the order that they arrive. So as a review, this is what a queue looks like. We have some data structure that allows us to store objects in a linear fashion, and then we have a front and rear. We remove items from the front of the queue, and we add items to the end of the queue. So suppose we had a hospital emergency room that used a queue. Here we can see at the front of the line, we have someone whose finger hurts, followed by someone with a broken arm, then a flesh wound, a minor scrape, a headache, a broken leg, and back pain. Using a queue, the person with the hurt finger would be the first person that got treated. So then suppose someone comes in who's having a heart attack. That person gets to go to the rear of the queue because that's how queues work. So then they'll help the person who has the finger that hurts. Once all of these other minor scrapes and headaches and so forth get handled, then they'll deal with the heart attack. Now you may say that that doesn't seem like a good way to do that. And in fact, if you go to the emergency room, that isn't how it works. They do what's called triage. The idea of triage is deal with the most urgent medical conditions first. So we can think of a priority queue as a queue that lets you skip line, assuming you have a higher priority. So if you have an ER where someone's finger hurts, someone comes in with a heart attack, they get to skip in line. Someone comes in with a headache, they go to the end of the line because they're low priority. Now let's say someone comes in with a broken leg, which is in a middle, a medium priority. Well, they would be able to skip all the existing low priority patients, but would still be behind the high priority patients. Then if another high priority patient comes in, they would go after the last high priority patient in the queue. So conceptually what's going on is it's almost like you have multiple queues, a high priority queue, medium priority queue, and low priority queue. And you only serve the medium priority queue if the high priority queue is empty or there's no high priority patients in line and you only service the low priority queue if there's nothing in the high priority or medium priority queue. This is one way to implement a priority queue where you have multiple queues and then you go through from high to low priority looking for the next element to service. When someone comes into the emergency room using a priority queue, okay, they say they have a sprained ankle. While that may be causing a lot of pain for the patient, it's not really a medical emergency, so it's a low priority situation and that sprained ankle would be added to the low priority queue. So they would get handled once we deal with the hurt finger, the minor scrape, and the headache. But then suppose someone comes in with a heart attack. They would go to the high priority queue. And now, while they would have to wait while the other urgent conditions are handled, they wouldn't have to wait for the medium priority or low priority situations to get handled. If this was the current state of the queue, this first heart attack would be handled, then the severe allergic reaction, and then the heart attack. Again, those are three potentially life-threatening situations, and so those would get the highest priority. Now, in this case, we're doing things one by one. Obviously, in an actual ER scenario, there would be multiple pathways for treatment, but we're trying to keep this example simple, so we're assuming that everything is getting handled one at a time. So now, there's nothing high priority, so the doctor comes around, what can I do? Well, here's this broken leg that you can handle. Broken leg gets handled, then we handle the low blood sugar, the chest pains. So after all of those are handled, this is what our queue looks like. Nothing high priority, only one medium priority thing. This person with a concussion is going to get treated relatively soon. However, then someone comes in who's having a heart attack. Since they have a high priority, the heart attack is going to get treated first, even though the concussion was there first. The priority supersedes the arrival order. So the heart attack gets handled. And then we would go on and treat the concussion. And then we would finally, if there were no high and medium priority cases to handle, we would start looking at these low priorities. Now, one thing to I want to bring up that in a real world scenario, we don't want this person staying in the emergency room forever. So there would probably be some sort of mechanism to say, okay, you've been waiting at a low priority for a long time. Since you've been waiting a long time, we'll just bump you up to medium priority so that eventually somebody can treat you because... For example, we wouldn't want this minor scrape to get infected and then they have worse problems. So here we're seeing three separate queues and that is one way to implement a priority queue where you add things to the appropriate queue and then you remove things from the high priority and if it's empty, you remove from the medium priority and if it's empty, you remove from the low priority. 
Another way to do that though would be with a heap. And if you'll notice, this is a heap where the high priority items are at the top and the medium priority and low priority are below those. You can use a min or a max heap here. Typically you'll see a min heap used where the lower the priority, the more urgent the priority is. But of course, whether it's a min or max heap, the only real difference is how we compare the priorities. So here with this priority queue, someone comes in with a broken arm. We add that new node and this is a valid location for it. So this is what the heap looks like now. Now, doctor comes in, they want to treat somebody. They'll treat the person with a heart attack because that's at the top of the heap. Then once that heart attack patient is removed, then the severe allergic reaction gets to go to the top of the heap. That'll be the next thing added. If in the meantime, someone comes in with a gunshot wound, that's high priority. So we would add the gunshot wound and adjust the heap so that now the gunshot wound has a higher priority than this low and medium priority patient. However, they still would have a lower priority than the heart attack since high priority items are sorted according to their arrival time. Okay, so let's think how we could implement a priority queue using a heap like we just saw. So our priority queue is going to have an array heap inside of it. And then when we add something to the queue, a heart attack doesn't on its own have a priority. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this wrapper class called prioritized object. The prioritized object is going to let us compare elements by their priority and their arrival time. So here's the members and constructor of the prioritized object class. So we have a static integer where we keep track of the next order. And you'll notice we increment that each time the constructor is called so that every prioritized objects gets a unique next order. And then there's members for the priority, the arrival time, and a reference to the element. So the constructor takes the element and a priority and sets the element and priority in the object. And then the arrival order is based off that next order. So you'll notice each time we add, we're incrementing next order. And so we can compare two objects by their arrival order if that's what we want to do. So our compare to method is going to first check the priority. And you'll notice here we're comparing the priorities. And if the priorities are not equal, that's what we use. However, if the priorities are equal, then we check the arrival order. And so either the priority or the arrival order will be different for any two objects, but we give precedence to the priority because we want to stress priority over the arrival order as would happen if we had a regular queue. So you can almost think of the priority allowing you to skip line in a queue. So if we want to add something to our priority queue, we're going to first add the element to a prioritized object, and then we would set the priority and the arrival order of that prioritized object. Then we add the prioritized object to the appropriate place in the heap. Since the heap uses compare to, it will put the new patient in the appropriate place in the heap. Our priority queue class itself will have an array heap as a member. That's what it'll use to add and remove elements. We don't need a constructor. So we have an empty constructor. We'll have size and, empty, and is empty methods so that we're able to check to see how many patients are total waiting and are there any patients waiting or not. Now, the interesting thing is going to be the add element. We can't just add the element because remember our array heap stores prioritized objects, not patients. So when we want to add something to the priority queue, the first thing we need to do is create a prioritized object using the object we want to add plus a priority. So here's our new prioritized object. We're going to set the priority to one. Its arrival order is 42. That's set for us by the constructor. We don't have control over that. And now we can add this prioritized object to the heap. And you can see now here's our element. Now to remove something from the priority queue, remember we want to get back an element. We don't want to get back a prioritized object. Nobody cares about those. We're just using that prioritized object wrapper class to give us additional functionality so that we can use the heap as a priority queue. So here's our heap that we saw before. We're going to remove the minimum element, which is at the top. So the remove min will return a prioritized object. However, remember the user only cares about the element. So the remove next method will return the element stored by the prioritized object. Again, this stuff is just utility stuff that we don't care about once it's off the heap. This is the information that the user cares about. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how priority queues work. They're a very important application for 
a heap data structure. The combination of using a wrapper class with a heap gives us some pretty amazing functionality without having to write a bunch of additional code.